I'm sorry to be such a sap. I'm having one of those nights where you can't sleep and you can't help but just stare at your ceiling because there's an ocean of feelings inside of you and it's too late to call anyone and I really don't want to wake Marilla. I miss Gilbert. Like, I really miss him. And I mean, I know it's only been like a week and a half and I mean, we talk all the time. But I, I've missed him in this entire spring, like crazy, and and there's some, just something about him that, I mean, I love Diana, and the whole time she was in Europe, we didn't talk that that much because she was constantly on the move without Wi-Fi, and I did miss her, but not in this way where you feel like this acid in your gut. I don't know why it's so hard for me to talk about my feelings. I mean, it never is. It, it, not with anything else. I'm. I don't. I'm not just an open book. I'm a fucking billboard. But with love, with romantic love, it, it just feels so scared. I'm so. Scared. Because if it doesn't work out, I'm going to be, I'm going, I'm going to be crushed. My tiny little fluttering fairy heart can't take it, especially with Gil, because I love him so much. Uh. I guess you can psychoanalyze it. I mean, my father is a dick, my mother is distant. My first experience of being loved happened when I was 17, and then... you died. And I am familiar with loss. But the loss of romantic love is or would be a completely new one. Even after all this growing I've done, there's still the tiny little voice inside my head that keeps telling me that. <laughs> Why would he love you though? You're loud and annoying and ugly and black and you have this monstrous hair. And I mean, no little boy ever dreamt of marrying someone who looked like me. They wanted to marry a fucking... Jane from Tarzan. Not that I'm saying that I'm marrying Gilbert or... Fuck. And I'm so happy and, and proud. Did you know that he got a scholarship to go to York? <laughs> All expenses covered. The little fucker keeps being so smart and so talented. I just... miss. Him. It's even worse because I keep thinking about his diagnosis, that depression, and I just feel horrible. Like I, I'm absolutely horrified. You know that feeling you get when you miss a step on the stairs? that second of fear of death in your gut. Sometimes when I hear about somebody almost getting hurt, or like one time Dora almost walked directly in front of a car and I just managed to pull her out of the way, or that time when I fell off the Barry's roof. When I, whenever I think about those times, I get that same hollow horror inside me. Like I can see it so clearly. Dora's slim body. Or I can hear the sound of my own neck breaking. And for a second, even though I know that everything did turn out fine, I can't Shake the fear. There's just 
is something about Gil that makes us fit together perfectly. Like even when we first became friends in the most platonic way possible, he was just so easy to be around. Sometimes I get overwhelmed with people, even the ones that I love dearly, like Dai or Phil or Pris. And I just need to sort of rest under a cherry tree, listen to the creek and just be by myself. But with Gil, I don't feel that. Or rather, I can be quiet with him in a way that makes me relax even when he's still there. It's like what I said about Avon Lee. I don't have to flex any muscle. And I, it's not like we're similar, really. I mean, I probably share more traits with Marilla than I do with him, but... We just... And when I think about Roy, for example, I still get really anxious thinking about it. I mean, like, the more time passes by, the more I realize how unhappy I was. And I didn't realize at the time because I thought that is what love is supposed to be like. Not the anxiety, but the intensity that caused it. I think that might have ended up badly. I was googling around one other night I couldn't sleep and I realized that mine and Roy's relationship feels weird to even call it that because it's so different from me and Gilbert. It's so weird that these two experiences are technically in the same category. Anyway, Roy and I ticked a lot of boxes for what qualifies as an abusive relationship. The way he wanted me to be a specific, very narrow version of myself. He decided what we would do and when. He kissed me when he wanted to kiss me. We talked about what he wanted to talk about. And I don't mean to be petty, but he's not really that interesting to talk to when it comes down to it. He cared about things that had to do with the two of us. And he cared about me to an extent, the things he could romanticize anyway. But anything external to our relationship that I cared about wasn't important to him. Only the things and the people that he cared about were important and good enough. And I mean, whenever I don't like a movie or a thing that Gilbert likes, he just sticks out his tongue and brings it up sometimes to have a playful argument. But he never makes me feel like an uncultured, lower-class idiot for it. Gilbert never makes me feel bad about myself. Which I'm now realizing is not really a merit, but more of a minimum requirement. I don't think Roy meant to hurt me. I don't think he picked me out of a crowd in order to assert his dominance on me. But I don't think he loved me either. He might have loved the idea of me. And he tried to keep that idea alive by shoving me into a mold that I didn't fit in. I don't think he's evil. He's just not very emotionally intelligent. And I don't think he quite realizes that women are not two-dimensional walking, talking objects for him to treasure. It's kind of like when you're 13 and you first download an illegal PDF of Twilight and you think that it's the most romantic thing ever. 
and then you grow a little and realize how incredibly fucked up it all is and it doesn't really bother me i rarely think about him and the one night like this comes and my entire body is consumed with anxiety and i don't know i mean i've been thinking of going to therapy not just because of the Roy thing, but... Well, I, I was talking to Stella the other day, who has this insight that only a person who hasn't lived inside of this circus can have. And she said that I have a lot of trauma in my life that I've never really dealt with. It feels so excessive to call it trauma, but it seems to tick the boxes. And... Turns out, I'm very good at not feeling things that I'm afraid to feel. And I just feel like my vault is full now and I need to empty it. So, here goes nothing. I miss Matthew. I miss him. Still. I think I'm still bitter that I had to lose him on top of everything else that's been shitty in my life. I am angry at my father. I'm angry at my foster families for well, the way they treated me. Nobody, nobody should get away with damaging a child like that. And I know it's not fair, but sometimes I feel, I still feel like Fred took Diana away from me. I'm angry at the world for taking my mother away from me and I am angry for the universe for giving me this unshakable self-hatred and this fear that my skin will hold me back in life <sighs> and although this is not a feeling I'm afraid of I'm so fucking grateful for Marilla Cuthbert. I don't know how broken I would be right now without her. She gave me a home. She gave me education. She gave me everything. And she's always, always there for me. And I know that to most people, it's normal to have someone who loves you unconditionally and to have a refuge when the world is hard. But I never had that till now. And if for some sadistic reason I had to pick the person who was the most important to me in the entire world, it would be her. And lastly, I, I miss Gilbert Blythe. I love him. I'm in love with him. So much of fucking hurts but in a good way <laughs>